Bighorn, the little community that could. Set in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, three hours northwest of Calgary, the Kiskawapton Reserve is home to approximately 300 of the Stony Nakoda First People. Kiskawapton means Bighorn in the Stony language. Bighorn has long believed that education is important. The community built its first school using its own resources in 1947. Finally, in 1999, Indian and Northern Affairs Canada put in a very small portable school with six classrooms. This school, unfortunately, did not include a gymnasium. It did, however, have a pad of cement that acted as an outdoor gymnasium space. We would play floor hockey outside in the winter, even no matter how cold it was, we would still play or how windy it was or how icy it was, the cement pad. It was, uh, it, it was crazy. <laughs> there are 99 students that attend the Ta Otha School. The people of the Kiskawapton Reserve, first and foremost, wanted to see their children succeed. The community and its leadership rallied behind education and considered it the cornerstone of this community. Educators were given the challenge to create a first-rate, First Nations education system that all could be proud of. 1965 was the last time there was a graduate from the Bighorn community, and that was the only graduate. First Nations aren't successful with graduates, and that's what we wanted to do here was have graduates. Merton Palmer, a renowned speech and language pathologist and educational psychologist, was hired to research literacy for the Stony Education Authority. He wanted to create an authentic program that would shift the paradigm of failure in school to unprecedented First Nations success. Literacy, but a broad definition would be literacy is reading, writing, thinking, and math. And, uh, and that's the expansion that, you know, has been made in the last few years because we used to think of it as just reading or reading and writing. Some mistakes we can, we make are about money, but most mistakes are about people. If you ask most teachers if they know how to teach children to read and write, they'll say yes. But when you look at the big picture, you know, a whole lot of students who have streamed through our classes, classes that we thought we were very competent in teaching, and they can't read and they're not literate, we have to ask the question, how come? In a report to the President of the United States, presented in 1995, research showed that 100 years of education produced dismal literacy rates across North America. So the idea was that I would come and take a small group of students who weren't literate and work with them to show what can be done, how to do it, and prove that it can be done. You know, it's sort of a model. <laughs> Start. Good listening. Okay. Using those same three letters, give me pit. Perfect, Ralph. You did a good job on that. What we're using is Discover Reading. I am very, very pleased with that program. I've seen just amazing results with it. You can see the gains and, you know, just the way the student um, basically decodes. And uh, you know that, that there is uh, a light going on. We didn't have a large enough staff as teachers. So what I did was, uh, asked permission of the administration to train all our TAs, the cook and the janitor, and then we utilized all these people in either one-on-one -on -one or small groups to assist us in uh, helping the students learn how to read. In the first year, we discovered that basic literacy can be learned in 50 to 100 hours of intensive, scientifically-based, appropriate instruction. Typical school systems move children one grade after approximately 180 hours of instructional time. After only 50 hours of instruction, Ta Otha School's highest gain for comprehension was 3.5 years, and the average gain was 1.5 years. Astonishingly, the students at Ta Otha who are involved in the literacy project gained more than twice the success realized by typical school systems. Ta Otha School is truly a model for others to follow. Just because of the shift in 
the thinking of the program, I, I, was, I was encouraged. And to see the success that we had was uh, pretty incredible. It, we hadn't seen anything like that. A rattlesnake strike is an example of very advanced natural development. The literacy program had a big, well, enormous effect on me through my reading and through my vocabulary. I'd mostly like to graduate grade 12. If I graduate, I'll be the first girl from my family, from my parents' family, from my father's side and my mother's side, who would have a grade 12 diploma. I've never seen it fail for anybody. And uh, yeah, it's a, I think it's a very valuable addition to our school. We definitely need money for training because uh, I think if we continue to train our staff, then our students will be even more successful. We had people working in the kitchen and people working in the office and the photocopy room. So we really didn't have the space and, and we juggled and people were very flexible and they had to be. I mean, but ideally we need much more space. We need staff. And we know that in, in the long run, you know, once we get over that hurdle, once we have the kids there, um, uh, it'll be clear sailing. With very little startup resources, the Ta Otha Literacy Project has achieved what it set out to do. After two successful years, this project is being moved to all schools in the Stony Education Authority. This project will require additional funds. However, we believe this is a small investment that will ensure success for the children and the future success of the Stony Nakoda First Nation.